Yeah, you need to show so, a lot. So, and all of these, a lot, these people know me. Y'all know me. I've been here, going here for a while. Y'all know my name is Bob, but y'all know all of that. Some of y'all don't know how I got where I got and how I'm here right now, like exactly where I'm at. So, what had happened was, uh, I was, when at the senior year of high school, I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be an artist and animator. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be DreamWorks, Pixar, all of that. I wanted to be up there. I wanted to be doing all of that junk. But God was calling me to something more than that. He said that um, he wanted me to be a youth pastor. I ran away from that quick. When he said, you want me to be a youth pastor? I said, no, you mean you want me to, you want me to be a Christian and do and still do animation, right? And he said, no, that's not what, that's no. <laughs> and, and I was like, I was like, I was like, no, I got you, I got you. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm gonna do. So I'm sitting there still trying to go into animation. Um, I was actually uh, trying to get into Virginia Western through this free program called CCAP. And God, I, I mean, honestly, I think God gave me a mind like mine because he wanted me to forget, and he wanted me to not fill out the papers right, because that's what happened. I had the grades for it, I had all the qualifications, I did not fill out the paper right, and so that was the only thing that did not make me eligible for CCAP. So, I'm sitting here, and honestly, I, I'm just gonna be honest with y'all, I was feeling a little bit depressed. I, I'm not even gonna lie. Everyone else around me sits there, they know what they wanna do, they know that they have some direction in life, and I'm sitting there, and I can't even get um, to the free program of CCAP. And like, that, that was like bothering me. Cause everyone around me was getting all these college acceptance letters, getting into scholarship programs, and I wasn't doing nothing. God said, why don't you just listen to what I was telling you to do, and be the youth pastor that I've called you to be. I said, I can't do it. I, I just, this call, you want me to do something that I don't have the ability to do. And so, with those mountains that get in our way, there be, needs to be mountains that need to be moved. And yeah, we don't have the ability to do it, but God can still work through us. So, that's why I call this message Mountain Movers. All right? So I'm going to take you to Matthew 17, uh, 14 through 20. If you have your Bible, if you got your Bible app or something, follow along. It's, it's, it's good stuff. Um, so basically, there's this boy. He was straight up demon possessed. Like y'all, no, like that sounds like a joke, but it, it, he was like straight up. Like you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. It talks about right here. The guy when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. Whoa, it's like, what did I do to deserve that? Like, you're just sitting there, you're talking to a woman, and he's like, you unbelieving and perverse generation. But anyway, he replied that, and he said, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out to the boy, and he it, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for it. Now, before I go into my message, I just want to I just want to pray over it. Lord, I'm sorry that I forgot to pray about this because that's the most important thing. I can't do any of this without you, Lord. So please, just anoint everything that I say and anoint my voice, and make everyone in this room notice how important you are, and be able to get and be able to try to get a better relationship with you, Lord. I pray that you work through this service and make everything go your way, Lord. To your fact, now I pray. Amen. Amen. So, there are reasons why we don't see mountains being moved nowadays. There's four reasons to be exact. And there's four reasons why we are always stuck in the same place. I'm talking about at this church, 
I'm talking about believers all across the world. I'm just talking about everyone that's, that knows about God. This is why we're staying in the same place. Four reasons. One, because we're comfortable. We're comfortable just being here, going to church, going home. Not actually getting anything from the message, not actually getting anything from what we're worshiping, just kind of singing the words, but not really actually knowing what they mean, and not really caring what they mean. We just go, go there, go home. We're back to the same old life that we were at before that Sunday, and then we just go on with our lives. We don't care. We just don't. It's just how we are. And so we get stuck in this place where we're too lazy to do anything. We know the mountains would need to be moved, but we're too lazy to get up and start trying to do, move these mountains. Second thing, we're stuck in the past. We have this real problem. I'm not sure if every other church has this problem because I haven't been in every other church. But I'll tell you that we have a problem here where we have stuck in the past syndrome. <laughs> what does that mean? That means <laughs> stuck in the past syndrome means when we're sitting there, we're just like, oh, it's cool that we did that then, but we can't do that now. Those mountains that were moved back then, they were only moved back then. Mm -hmm. They can't move those mountains now. And I'm going to straight up call you out. You might think that you're not part of that, but when you're sitting there and you're trying to sit there and say, you know, that youth service that we did last year was great. It was so great. We were doing so many awesome things. We had a youth band. We had all these things going on. And wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So, so you're still sitting there talking about that. So why haven't we done that again? Why haven't we sit there and put the things together to do a youth service again? Oh, wait, we don't have a youth band. Do oh, no, yes, we do. We got enough people to be in a youth band. We have a drummer. We have a singer. We have people that can play guitar, and we have people that can sing. We know people that can do this. We know someone that can play bass. We know people. Hey, this is me. Yeah, no one wants to look at me now. They're just like, oh, no, 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 he didn't. Just call us out. But I'm just going to call you all out because this is the type of thing that is not going to make us move anywhere because we're just sitting there stuck in the past. If we're sitting here stuck in a valley, then we can't expect the mountain to move. When we sit there and we're just like, you know that mountain that's behind us now? It'd be cool if this mountain in front of us move, but I'm too stuck looking at this mountain behind me. Oh, that's cool. That, that's cool that we did that then. We ain't got the materials to do that now. Tell me why we can't do that now. Tell me why we can't still do awesome things. Tell me why every time that I look back and every time that I think about cool things that happened in the church, it got to be in the past. It can't be the future. It can't be the present. That's an issue that we need to go out and we need to look about. We need to start looking into that because it's an issue and it's not okay. Third, we have this thing where people get worried about failure. I understand being worried about failure. You sit there and you think about it and you're just like, but what if like, I try to do something, I try to do some event, I try to do something great for God and then, you know, I just mess up. It just don't work out right or anything like that. And let me tell you, you are going to fail sometimes. But if you sit there and you just st get stuck in your failure, then of course nothing's going to happen. But let me, let me give you all a better um, understanding of what this is. That's like sitting there, you playing basketball, Jeremiah. You playing basketball, Jeremiah. You sitting there trying to pass it to Paul, and then every time you want to pass it to AJ, because he's scared to shoot. And you like, bro, you open, shoot. And he's like, nah, I don't want to shoot, though, because, like, I could miss. And if I miss, everyone will to look at me funny. But, like, if you never take the shot, then how are you going to expect to ever get the point? You're always going to sit there and be passing it off to the next dude. You're always going to be sitting there saying that you can never do it. But don't you see we do that the same in the church, right? I can't do that. Let's pass it off to blah, blah, blah. Let's pass it off to him. Let's pass it off to her. Instead of saying we can do that. Okay? Maybe you don't identify with any of those things. But I know that the, a lot of y'all identify with the fourth one. Y'all don't think God can use you. Y'all don't think God can use us. You're too jacked up, right? 
There's too much wrong with you. You're too young. Ain't no go pay attention to you. You're just, you're just, you're just someone, you're, you're too young. You're too young to vote. You can't drive a car. You, you, you don't have a job. <laughs> Ain't no one gonna listen to you, right? I know, I, I sit there and I have to look at one part of the Bible that is very important to me. Don't anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. That's for Tim Timothy 4.12, if you want to look that up when you get home. <laughs> now, now, Timothy was a young dude, all right? Paul sat there and told him that because he knew that this dude was scared. He knew that he felt like he couldn't do stuff because he was young, and he felt like people were going to look at him. And let me tell you, the reason why you guys are not getting stuff here and people are not paying attention to the youth, I've noticed is not because you guys are young. It's because you guys are lazy. Mm. Mm. And I'm sorry, but that's just me being real. Mm. If you guys sit there and you guys want people to pay attention to the youth, then y'all better start be doing something that make them pay attention. You gotta actually be an example in love, in conduct, in purity, and in faith. Y'all ain't being that yet. So don't expect no one to get behind you until y'all start sitting there showing that. Mm. That's just the true facts. So it's not because you're young, it's because y'all acting foolish. <laughs> y'all learn, y'all learn. Alright, so next one. I don't have enough talent. Which can't be used in this room because I see a lot of talent in this room. I really do. But people don't want to do anything about it, but that's alright. But it's because we sit there and we compare ourselves. I'm not as good as that guy when it comes to this. I'm not good as this girl when it comes to this. I'm not at the top tier of what I can be. You guys got to understand that God can sit there and work through people that ain't got that much talent and make them be able to do something good. I'm not a good speaker. I speak a lot. I speak loud. But I am not a good speaker. But God has worked in me. God, I, I, said, I told God, I said, use me. Use me up. Even though I'm not exactly the best speaker, he's, got, he's making me new. He's making me have the ability to do the things that he has called me to do. I'm definitely not the best rapper out there. I see a lot of good rappers. But God has given me so many opportunities in rap and so many people to reach to. I know it's only God. <laughs> But with that, you also have to look at this verse. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if you truly believe that, that means that you can do anything. So that means when God says, I want you to organize a food drive for a bunch of homeless people. Shoot, you can do it. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Can y'all say it with me? I can do all, all things, things through Christ, Christ who strengthens me. Now, can I get a little bit more? Uh, can I get one more? No, one more time, all right? I can do all, all things, things through Christ, Christ who strengthens me. So, no more excuses for that. But like I said at first, one thing that I find very common, this is the most common thing, is I'm too jacked up for God to use me. I got too much going on in my life. I got too much sin. My background is messed up. My parents, they're, they're, they're broken up. I got a broken family. I got all these broken things. I got all these things going wrong in my life. There ain't no way God can use me. Everyone that God uses are people that got it all together. Everyone is people that you already know have it in them. They never had to actually start working towards going to God. They were just already there, and so God used them. That's not how it works. I'm going to tell you about two people that I know that God used, and they were jacked up. He used Paul. Dude, jacked up. Dude, straight up persecuting Christians. He was straight up looking over people and saying, hey, yeah, you killed them. Good job, basically. And you got to understand that this dude... 
was jacked up, but when he sit there and he let God use him, God changed him around and made him something usable. Second person I want to talk about is me. God is using me, and I'm jacked up. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I'm never going to sit there and try to act like I'm perfect, because I definitely ain't. I definitely got so many problems with me that y'all would never know, but God does. God knows everything that's wrong with me. He knows how much of a broken human being I am. And says, I want to use you to minister to people. And I don't understand it. I don't understand. I'm not worthy of this. There's so much wrong with me. But God still wants to use me because I said, because I let him use me. And so what that's what I'm trying to say with y'all. If you let God use you, he will. And he will change you from the inside out and make you do the things that he has called you to do. <clears throat> but see, we, like I said, we just don't think these things are possible. But we've got to understand that anything can happen when you trust in God. Here's a little example for you. He can move mountains that you can never even think of. But it's only if you're willing. You gotta have faith. Faith as a mustard seed. Faith as whatever, but you gotta have some faith. You gotta let God use you. Now, I wanna tell you, a lot of y'all are not happy about exactly how everything goes at the church. Y'all not happy about the direction we're going in, but it's only going to happen if we all work together and start moving some mountains. So I want to ask y'all today, are y'all ready to move some mountains? Mm -hmm. Like, do y'all actually want to see things happen? Do y'all actually want to see God change lives? Do you actually want to see him change yours? Because he's changed mine. 
As I said, then I started having faith in him. Everything started coming together. As I started sitting there, actually moving the mountains of fear, God said, I'm going to have everything work out in your favor. And things have been working out well with me going towards ministry because that's what I was called to do. Not all of y'all called to be a pastor. Every one of you is called to ministry, though. Every one of y'all is called to be a Christian in whatever you do. Whatever that is, is all up to what you figure out when you talk to God. I know some people in here that want to be pilots. I know some people in here that want to be engineers. I know some people that don't know what they want to be. I know people that want to be basketball players. I know people that want to be drummers. Whatever you want to be, you can use that to glorify God. But I'm going to ask again, do y'all want to move some mountains? Do y'all want things to change? Do you want the things around you to just completely leave your sight and for everything to start going your way? You're going to have to start talking to God. 